Welcome to our exploration of the evolution of the United States population over the centuries. In this video, we'll look at the top 10 largest U.S. cities by decade, starting off with 1790, the year of the first U.S. Census. Each decade tells a unique story shaped by immigration, economic changes, inventions, and historical events. In 1790, the top 10 most populated cities or towns were predominantly port cities in the Northeast, with New York City being number one at 33,131 people, followed by Philadelphia and Boston in the top three. Charleston, South Carolina came in at number four. Charleston was a bustling trade center at the time, and its port was the hub of Atlantic trade for the southern U.S. Baltimore came in at number five. The Northern Liberties District, a suburb of Philadelphia, which would be eventually annexed into the city limits, was number six, and Salem, Massachusetts, was number seven. Salem, best known for the 1692 witch trials, was a major seaport in early American history. Two towns in Rhode Island came in at number eight and number nine, with Newport at eight and Providence at number nine. There was actually a tie for 10th with Southwark, Pennsylvania, another Philly suburb that would later be annexed into the city, and Marblehead, Massachusetts. Marblehead, right next to Salem, was an important fishing port known as the greatest town for fishing in New England. Marblehead still has one of the finest concentrations of buildings from the 16 and 1700s in the U.S. As we move into the 1800s, Baltimore surpassed Boston for the number three spot, while Marblehead and Newport fell off the list, with Norfolk, Virginia entering the top 10. Norfolk, the region's economic hub, is the only Virginia city ever to be on the top 10 list. As we fast forward to 1810, we have two new cities on the list, Albany, New York at number 10, and New Orleans, Louisiana came in at number 7, as Norfolk, Virginia, and Providence, Rhode Island fell off the list. Albany, located about 150 miles up the Hudson River from New York City, started off as a Dutch fur trading post. It later became the capital of New York in 1797, and in 1807, a commercial steamboat line started running from New York City to Albany, further adding to its population growth. New Orleans is the first city not part of the original 13 colonies to make the list. At the time, Louisiana wasn't a state yet, and the city was part of the Orleans Territory. In 1820, New Orleans moved up the list again to number five, due to it becoming a booming trade post with its strategic location at the mouth of the mighty Mississippi River. New York City became the first city to surpass 100,000 people. Washington, D.C. entered the top 10 as the country's new capital, replacing Albany, New York, as we move forward to 1830, Baltimore moved into the second spot with Cincinnati, Ohio entering the top 10 in the eighth spot. Baltimore saw significant population growth in the early 1800s due to its strategic port location, making it a major hub for the Atlantic wheat trade, along with the establishment of textile mills and other manufacturing industries along the city's waterfront, creating new job opportunities. Cincinnati is the first Midwestern town in the top 10. Cincinnati was a vital trading post for pioneers traveling west on the Ohio River. Albany re-entered the list with Washington, D.C. and Salem, Massachusetts falling off the list. In 1840, New Orleans continued its progression up the list, coming in at number three. New Orleans' rapid growth shows the importance of the Mississippi River before the growth of the railroad. Brooklyn, New York entered the top 10 at number 7 on the list as people started to spread out from Manhattan. This was before the five boroughs of New York City, and Brooklyn was counted as a separate city on the census. Charleston, South Carolina dropped a 10th, and this would be the last time it was ever on the top 10 list, with South Wark, Pennsylvania falling off the list. As we move into 1850, more Americans are moving west, and St. Louis makes its first appearance at number 8, and it's the first city west of the Mississippi to make the list. Starting off as a French trading post along the Mississippi River, St. Louis saw rapid population growth due to its location with its connection through the Ohio River to the east, 
the Mississippi to the north and south, and the Missouri River to the west. Charleston and Northern Liberties fell off the list, while another Philly suburb, Spring Garden, Pennsylvania, made the list for the only time. In 1860, Philadelphia moved up to the second spot due to the 1854 Act of Consolidation, which greatly expanded the city to include areas like the Northern Liberty District and Spring Garden, which came off the list along with Albany and were replaced by Chicago at number 9 and Buffalo at number 10. Chicago became a major railroad hub, allowing it to become a central point for facilitating goods from the agricultural Midwest to the East. During this period, you start to see the impact the growing railroad system had on the population. Buffalo, New York, who was able to crack the top 10 for the first time, was a crucial transportation hub. Along with being a key rail hub, Buffalo also benefited from the completion of the Erie Canal in 1825, which connected the Great Lakes with the Atlantic Ocean. Buffalo replaced Albany on the list. In 1870, the first West Coast city appears, and no surprise, it's San Francisco. San Francisco experienced a population boom after 1848 with the gold rush and also silver discoveries in the late 1850s. The first transcontinental railroad was completed in 1869, helping boost the West Coast population as well. San Francisco replaced Buffalo on the list. 1880 was the first time that we didn't see any new cities on the top 10 list. New York City was the first city to hit 1 million people, even though areas like Brooklyn were still not counted towards their population numbers yet. Chicago continued to move up the list, coming in at number four, even though the Great Chicago Fire destroyed about a third of the city in 1871. As we move into 1890, Cleveland, Ohio makes its first appearance on the top 10 list, replacing New Orleans. New Orleans lost ground to other cities as people became less reliant on rivers for transportation. The Civil War vaulted Cleveland into the first rank of American manufacturing cities. It became home to numerous major steel production firms, attracting large waves of European immigrants seeking jobs in the factories. Cleveland also became one of the main oil refining centers in the U.S. Standard Oil began as a partnership based in Cleveland. As we turn the page to a new century, Brooklyn was replaced on a list in 1900 with Buffalo, who's back at number eight. Brooklyn would be politically absorbed into NYC with the creation of the five boroughs. New York City's population skyrocketed to over three million with the inclusion of all five boroughs for the first time. In 1910, the list kind of bunched back up again to the Midwest and Northeast with two new cities making the top 10. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Detroit, Michigan, both industrial towns replacing San Francisco and Cincinnati. Pittsburgh became the center of the booming steel industry, while Detroit became headquarters for automobile companies like Ford and GM, attracting large waves of people looking to fill the demand for labor in the auto factories. The demand for labor was so great in Detroit that in 1920, it rose to number four on the list. Cleveland moved into the top five for the only time, and sunny Los Angeles finally makes an appearance on the top ten, replacing snowy Buffalo. Los Angeles experienced a population boom in the early 1900s, primarily due to the discovery and extraction of oil, the emerging film industry, and the beautiful weather didn't hurt either. In 1930, L.A. moved up quickly to the number five spot, with no new members on the list. There was also no new members in 1940, but several cities on the list saw their population decrease for the first time ever. Though slight, Philadelphia, Cleveland, St. Louis, and Boston all saw population decreases during this decade. These declines were primarily due to the devastating effects of the Great Depression, which led to widespread job losses in the city's manufacturing industries. The 1950 Top 10 Census welcomed back a former member in Washington, D.C., which came in at number 9, replacing Pittsburgh. Many cities on this list peaked in population during this period. Chicago, Philly, Detroit, Baltimore, Cleveland, St. Louis, D.C., and Boston all had their population peak during the census and all saw a population decline in the next census 
due to mass suburbanization as many Americans retreated to the suburbs. Pollution, congestion, and increased crime rates in urban centers, along with the Eisenhower Interstate System and the GI Bill that made available low-interest home loans for returning World War II veterans, it all had people fleeing to the burbs. The 1960 census was the first census to show a decline in the overall population in the top 10 cities, though LA's population continued to grow, moving into the third spot. Houston, the first Texas city ever to be in the top 10 list, comes in at number seven, replacing Boston on the list. It's the first census that Boston wasn't one of the top 10 largest cities. In 1970, another Texas city appears on the list, with Dallas coming in at number eight, replacing St. Louis showing a significant migration to the Lone Star State, primarily due to the growth of the oil and petrochemical industries fueled by the readily available oil reserves in the area. The start of widespread availability of air conditioning in homes in the 50s and 60s made living in the Texas hot climate and other parts of the South more feasible, and the lower cost of living compared to most other areas didn't hurt either. In 1980, New York City showed a significant population decrease of over 10%, even though it was still by far the most populated city. Several factors led to the population decline, but the major factor was the decline in manufacturing and loss of jobs. Manufacturing jobs moved out of places like the Garment District and moved down south and overseas. The city's fiscal mismanagement resulted in the crunch on city amenities. Crime was up and people headed for the suburbs, decreasing New York City's tax base, intensifying the financial crunch on the city, though the city would eventually recover. 1980 also had two Southwest newcomers on the list, Phoenix, Arizona, and San Diego, California, replacing Washington, D.C. and Cleveland, showing further migration to the South and the impact of air conditioning. In 1990, L.A. knocked Chicago out of the second spot, and San Antonio, Texas, replaced Baltimore on the list. In 2000, New York City became the first and only U.S. city to surpass 8 million residents, while Detroit dropped to number 10, and its population fell to under 1 million due to suburbanization and a continued loss of jobs in the city. It's the first and only U.S. city to date to have 1 million residents and then fall back under the 1 million mark. Detroit completely fell off the list in 2010, being replaced by San Jose, California, which makes its first appearance on the list. San Jose's population grew due to the expansion of the computer and electronics industry, also known as Silicon Valley. And in the final decade census, Philadelphia, for the first time ever, dropped out of the top five, dropping to number six, being overtaken by Phoenix. And it's the first time in which all 10 of the largest cities have populations over 1 million. Let's take a close look at a side-by-side -side comparison at the top 10 list from the first census in 1790 to the 2020 list. What do you think the top 10 will look like in 100 years? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. Please subscribe for more historical videos. Take care.